Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches. And I promised you that we would do a fix slash overhaul video uh, on that TS on that Tissot TSX9 that I showed you in the last haul video and here it is. Now I do know that the watch has some faults because it was in the description. Also you did see it had that nasty scratch uh, on the glass. So we know we have to do some work. So let's fly over to the bench uh, and start looking into this watch. And here we are with the watch on the bench. And again, I was super lucky to find this for 89 pounds. Uh, now it's time for a complete restoration because I, <laughs> I was in love with this watch before getting it. And now even more so after seeing it in person and holding it in my hands. Uh, Obviously we have to do two things. Uh, there's an issue with the module, uh, which the seller uh, pointed out. I don't expect it to be something serious. And we have to do a bit of polishing because right here, yes, now you can see that uh, there is this scratch. You can hook your finger, you, you can hook your nail into it. So uh, it's medium depth. Probably I have to use 800 then 1000 grit uh, and then polish it. Uh, I always say that when you have a watch uh, where you have to work both on the module and on the case, always start with the module because uh, case restorations are usually lengthy and if you manage to restore a case but then the module has an issue that you can't fix and it's a hard to source module as parts, uh, then that's time invested not wisely. But in this case, uh, I really want to restore the case first because this uh, type of case is very rare, the TSX-9 case, especially in this condition. Uh, the module is not only made for this TSO watch, but it's been used by other brands. So sourcing a replacement one in case I can fix it uh, is not going to be hard. So first, we are going to work on the case. So before polishing any glass, you must make sure that you have enough glass protruding outwards uh, that you can polish. Uh, and I can it's it's not obvious to you on on film But yeah here right where my nail is you can actually see that the, the glass is protruding outwards a bit about a Quarter of a millimeter or so which means I can take uh, I think it's enough to remove that scratch But this bezel is the thing that wears first on a watch and I don't want to accidentally scratch it uh, on the sandpaper when I'm uh, rubbing it on the sandpaper so I want to see if I can remove it and I experimented with a screwdriver and I did see that uh, the, the bolts have a very peculiar head now if I were to insert the screwdriver only the tip uh, would uh, enter because the center of the bolt is at the same level as uh, the entire side so what I need to do is polish uh, the head of this screwdriver and I believe that in case of this watch a screwdriver polished like that and made useless is a price worth paying. That is what we want, a flatter surface because as I said uh, the screw uh, right between the ditches, I don't know how to call them, uh, is actually flat. Most screws are pointy, the reason why your Phillips screwdriver is pointy in the middle. If anybody wants to know, I uh, didn't want to use a flat blade uh, screwdriver because I want to have as much grip on these bolts as possible uh, to be sure that uh, my screwdriver doesn't slip to the side and damages this very precious bezel. Okay, there we go. I was afraid that these would be uh, ornamental, but uh, they're not. They're actual functioning, so holding the bezel in place. And very carefully, I'll use this a uh, craft knife, box opening knife, just to run it along the sides and uh, see if I can remove it. Oh, we're in on this side.
Uh, and I think what's going on, I know what's going on here. <laughs> this is how you remove the entire glass. Oh no. Okay, right. So this means that I have no option but to try and polish the glass uh, when it's in place. Well, this is how you learn, right? I'll pull it back in and uh, open it from the other side. Uh, remove the module and the bracelet and <laughs> be really careful with the polishing. So you've seen me do this before. The idea is take the case, keep it as flush as possible, and then just do movements in all directions until you remove the visible scratches, then uh, increase the grit to somewhere a thousand, even two thousand, even between 1000 and 2000. Uh, the, idea, the idea is to get it as transparent as possible before we go to the cerium oxide slurry for the final polish. And as you can see, the scratch has already started to come off. We only have this upper side, but we need to continue doing this and be very careful to keep it flush. We only have a quarter of a millimeter before we hit this very, very rare bezel. So loads of elbow grease and we've removed all the scratches and all you have to do now is resurface this to a smaller grit. That is the finish that we are looking for. Uh, it is uh, without scratches and the last high grit, what was it, 1000 or 2000, 1, uh, left just uh, sort of a matte finish, which will be removed by the cerium oxide slurry. I'm not going to explain how the cerium oxide slurry works, I'm just going to show you me uh, doing it uh, because you've seen it in my other videos. So, yeah. Pretty close to finishing this up and uh, pretty pleased with the result thus far. and check out how good that came out. Uh, I still have to clean off this uh, cerium oxide off of it, but it's looking like a million bucks. Now you tell me that that isn't perfection. Just look at that. So one thing to mention about this watch is that it has a very peculiar construction of how the pushers are held in so it doesn't use the usual C clips but the pusher disassembles in two parts so there you have the stud that is pressing against uh, the contact on the module and this is what you have outside and uh, these are actually pressed uh, into these so basically if you were to assemble it it would go like this like so. So they are pressed in together. Uh, and <laughs> the way to extract them is from inside the case. Meaning that, like we have this pusher here. You can see that it sticks out just a little bit. Uh, you take a pair of flush cutters 
and uh, you grab the head and just do a small movement and then it will come right out hopefully <laughs> and there we go I have seen this construction before but I didn't catch on how to remove it so well if you didn't know now you know now before working on the module I did say at the beginning of the video that uh, the watch was advertised and here is the auction as having some issues and I can uh, show you here below basically the guy says that I put in a new battery uh, approximately three days ago and uh, it took two days for anything on the LCD screen to appear. Uh, the module is in reasonably good condition and you will see that. But this triggered me to do some research uh, while looking about online. And I did see that this module uh, is issue prone. Uh, here's a post on Reddit, the guy saying they're fussy little creatures to get the digital working or the analog working, occasionally getting them both to work. Then another uh, older post here saying that uh, however recently it's gone out of sync and the timekeeping is very erratic it needs some attention and here is our module and it does look to be pretty clean so uh, I don't know if the module is fussy because of its electronics or something dirty in it but uh, I did put a battery in it and it fired straight up. Um, it does cycle through the functions, okay. Oh. And uh, the micro light did work. So uh, I am going to give it a strip and a clean uh, just to make sure I future proof it. Uh, so let's do that now. So there isn't much corrosion on the board, which is why I believe it's working fine and there's just a contact issue, but uh, I do see a bit right over there and if I turn the board over, uh, right over there. So I'm going to take this under the microscope uh, and try with a toothpick dipped in alcohol just to gently remove that uh, and then uh, just rub the board with some alcohol in all the places where we have uh, pads exposed to make sure it's nice and clean. So you can probably see that this trace is corroded and I am going to measure and check for continuity. Uh, see if I have to do any corrections. Hopefully you can hear my multimeter. Yep, and that trace is fine. I'm just going to do some surface cleaning. Hopefully this watch, this board is only cleaning and I suspect it's only that because it did turn on when I put a battery in it. So after much thinking I decided to scrape away the uh, corroded conformal coating from the top of this trace just to make sure there are no interruptions underneath and just to remove any corrosion that was lying under there. So now it's exposed to the air and I went the next step and applied some silver conductive compound uh, to both holes just to make sure they have the correct, they, they do make bridge with the uh, components on the other side, which is this capacitor. And what I'm going to do right now is measure these two capacitors just to make sure. I, I think they have the same value. Usually in watches uh, on the same module you get two in pairs that have <laughs> the same value. 
So uh, I'll see if they're closer now, just to make sure this one, because it was so much corrosion on it, it didn't uh, get broken or something. So I'm measuring the supposedly good one. And I get a reading of 70 nanofarads. And this one that had loads of corrosion. And yep, I get 60, 67, 69 nanofarads. So this one is good as well. So uh, I think we're all set for reassembly. And just in case I get this question, uh, I have this capacitance meter. It's a uni T, but this is a, I don't think it's a medium, it's a lower tier brand, but it's pretty solid. Unity UT601 uh, with this uh, type of scale. Uh, it did the job thus far and I don't think I need anything uh, with higher performance. So yeah, this is what I use. So as you did see, nothing much needed to be done uh, to get this watch working and looking as best as it can, uh, which makes even more worthwhile the price of £89 that I paid for it. And I think this definitely uh, requires a review, so look out for that video next. I do want to get the word out because I think this watch uh, is terribly underestimated, uh, especially because it comes in so many, many variants. The module also uh, is found in other uh, watches um, and it does have some quirks that I really really love especially uh, related to how the digital part synchronizes with the analog part so you will want to see that. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!